Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about solving linear inequalities. So we're going to solve linear inequalities, and then in the next video, we'll talk about recognizing inequalities with no solution or all real numbers as solutions, and we'll also solve compound inequalities. So let's start off with an example where inequalities might come in with the real world. Suppose that a rent-a-heap car company charges $125 a week plus 20 cents for every mile that you drive the car. If X represents the number of miles that you drive the car in a week, write a linear function that models the weekly cost. Now this is something that we've talked about before. Notice that this linear function will have a y-intercept and also a slope. Well, the slope corresponds to the average rate of change. We talked about that earlier. Well, is $125 per week well, it's 20 cents per mile. So if we're driving X miles in the week, then 20 cents for every mile would be 0 0.20 times X. So the slope or the average rate of change is 20 cents per mile. And $125 is what's called the fixed cost. That's how much you have to pay to actually rent the car. So this is a linear function. C of X equals 125 plus 0 0.20 X. And this represents the cost function. So a question that we were asking earlier in this chapter was, Let's say you have exactly $500 that you can use to, in the week to rent a car and drive the car. $500 exactly. Well, you would take the cost and set it equal to $500 and solve for X to figure out the exact number of miles that you can drive during that week. Well, that's not very realistic. Most of the time you're talking about you only have at most so much money that you're, you're willing to pay for renting the car. So we're going to be limited by how much money that we're going to be willing to spend in a week on renting the car. Let's say we have at most $335 to rent a car. Well, this doesn't become an equation anymore. If we set this equal to 335, that would tell us how many miles we can drive exactly to get $335 spent exactly. Well, we're okay if we come under budget. So this becomes an inequality instead. So 125 is the fixed cost plus 0 0.20 was the average rate of change times X. As long as this cost is less than or equal to 335, our budget amount, then we're okay. So this is what's called a linear inequality. So this symbol is an inequality symbol that represents less than or equal to. So you have the less than symbol and it's underlined or there's an underscore meaning that it's or equal to as well. So whenever you place an inequality symbol with a linear function, then you have what's called a linear inequality with one variable. So in this section, we're gonna solve linear inequalities and notice what's the difference between the solution sets. All right, so the biggest difference between solving linear equations versus solving linear inequalities is that solving linear inequalities will be exactly the same steps that we use when we solve linear equations. There's just one little thing. The solutions to an inequality will be an infinite set of real numbers. So when we talk about the set of all numbers that satisfies the inequality, that's called the solution set to the inequality. So here's what a linear inequality might look like when in one variable. So if you have a linear function and the variable is called x, then you have f of x equals mx plus b. A linear inequality might be any of these four using the four different inequality symbols. So you have mx plus b is less than zero. You have mx plus b is less than or equal to zero. mx plus b is greater than zero or mx plus b is greater than or equal to zero. Those four are different inequalities in one variable. And it turns out that if you want to solve each of these four inequalities, you isolate the variable for the linear inequality in exactly the same way that you would isolate a variable solving a linear equation instead. The idea is that you want to produce equivalent inequalities with whatever step that you do. So these are the steps that produce equivalent inequalities. The addition property. If you have A is less than B, that means you can add the same constant or same real number on both sides of the inequality, and this inequality is still true. So if you have A less than B, you can also subtract the same amount on both sides of the inequality symbol. As long as you're adding or subtracting, the inequality symbol stays the same direction. If it, if it was less than, it stays less than. If it was greater than, it stays greater than. 
you're allowed to multiply by a positive number with an inequality. So if a is less than b and c is a positive number, then if you multiply both sides of the inequality by this positive number, then the inequality stays the same. Same thing if you were dividing. So if you had a less than b and c is positive, you can divide by c on both sides of the inequality and it stays the same direction as well. The only catch with solving inequalities is that if you ever multiply or divide by a negative number, a negative quantity on both sides of the inequality, then the direction of the inequality is reversed. So if a is less than b and c is a negative number, if you multiply by this negative number on both sides of the inequality, notice that the inequality was less than and now it's greater than. You have to reverse the inequality symbol. If a is less than b and c is negative and you divide by a negative number on both sides of the inequality, then you also have to reverse the inequality symbol. And these give you an example of when you add and subtract, the inequality does not change the direction. If you multiply or divide by a positive number, it does not change. But if you divide or multiply by a negative number, then the inequality does reverse direction. So let's go back to the problem that we were talking about with rent to heat problem. So now we can actually solve the original question that we were opening with this section. How many miles can you drive your rent to heap car if you're able to spend or willing to spend at most $335 in that week? Well, remember that the linear function was 125 plus 0.20x. The cost is at most $335 to rent and drive the car from rent to heat. So that means we have an inequality that we can set up. 125 plus 0.20x is less than or equal to 335. So this is, becomes a linear inequality and now let's solve by isolating the variable. And keep in mind, if you ever multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to reverse the inequality symbol. So move any terms around on either side of the inequality so that you have like terms on the same side. So subtract 125 on the left side of the inequality. So 0.20x is less than or equal to, so it stays the same inequality because you subtracted this time. And that becomes 210 on the right side of the inequality. And now you can divide to isolate the x by dividing by 0.2 on both sides of the inequality. And notice that the inequality does not change direction because we're dividing by positive 0.2. And this becomes 1,050 miles. So this means if you drive no more than 1,050 miles, then you will spend at most $335. So in other words, we'll come under the budget or we'll actually meet the budget if we drive no more than 1,050 miles in that week. So notice the difference between solving a linear equation versus a linear inequality. The solution set for a linear equation is just a single number. It would be like x equals 7 is the only value that makes the equation true. Well, for an inequality, there are an infinite number of real numbers that will make this inequality true. I could drive 0 miles and I still come under the budget. I can drive x equals 1 mile and I'm still under the budget. I can drive x equals 7.2 miles, I'm still under the budget. I can drive any number of miles or any fraction of a mile that I want as long as I'm under or at 1,050 miles. So that's why there's an infinite set of solutions. All right, so let's try example one. We're gonna solve several linear inequalities. Solve the following linear inequalities and use interval notation to express the solution set because it's an infinite set of real numbers and graph each solution set on a number line. So number one, two subtract three x is greater than or equal to five. So notice that's a linear inequality because x is being raised to the first power, just like a linear function would, or a linear equation. If you want to solve for x, you need to isolate the x term. So subtract both sides of the inequality by 2. You have negative 3x is greater than or equal to. Keep the same inequality because we subtracted 2 only. 
and that becomes 3. And now, if you divide by negative 3, you divide by negative 3 on both sides of the inequality, you have to reverse the inequality symbol. So divide both sides by negative 3, x. It was greater than or equal to, now it becomes less than or equal to. 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. So again, you have to reverse the inequality symbol. when dividing or multiplying by a negative number. This is the only time that you ever flip or reverse the inequality is when you multiply or divide by a negative. And that's the step that you actually reverse the inequality. Don't reverse the inequality until you actually divide by a negative number or multiply by a negative number. So this is the solution set. Any x value that is less than or equal to negative 1 is a solution to this inequality. So how do you write this using interval notation? Well, the solution set using interval notation would be all x values that are less than or equal to negative 1. That would be all the values towards negative infinity up to negative 1, that's as far right as you would go on number line, and it's or equal to. So you do want to include x equals negative 1 as a solution. So square bracket. Sometimes it actually helps to draw a number line first, then you can figure out interval notation from the number line. So our number line would be, well, you don't actually have to put so many tick marks. The only number that we need to be concerned about is negative 1. So negative 1, let's put it right in the center of the number line. And now, which way of the number line is going to be shaded to represent the solution set? Well, we want the x values, the real numbers, that are less than negative 1 or equal to negative 1. So if it's or equal to, you use a square bracket. And that square bracket will be facing to the left because we want to shade this number line to the left forever. And so this number line represents all x values that are solutions. So this would be from negative infinity to the left and it would go no further to the right than negative 1. So you're representing this as x values from left to right on the number line. Okay, number 2. This time let's try negative 3 times x minus 2 in parentheses is less than or equal to 3x subtract 5. So again, this is a linear inequality. You have x is raised to the first power. Well, to solve a linear inequality, you solve exactly like a linear equation. So remove any grouping symbols by using the distributive property. So this becomes negative 3x plus 6 is less than or equal to 3x subtract 5. Notice that you do not reverse the inequality because you multiply by a negative, but you didn't multiply by a negative number on both sides of the inequality. It stays the same direction. So now combine any like terms to get them on the same side of the inequality. So let's subtract 6 and also subtract negative 3x. So negative 3x subtract 6 would be 3x subtract 11 and then subtract 3x to move the x terms to the left side of the inequality. You would have negative 6x is less than or equal to negative 11. And now, notice if you divide by a negative number, you have to reverse the inequality symbol. So this becomes x is greater than or equal to positive 11 sixth. So negative 11 divided by negative 6 will be positive 11 sixth. And so again, reverse the inequality symbol. when multiplying or dividing by a negative number. And the only other comment I want to make is that make sure you leave your answer as a fraction. Do not represent it as a decimal because this is the exact value of x that x can be greater than or equal to 11 sixths. So we're ready to represent this as solutions that is an interval notation. So the interval notation would be all the x values greater than or equal to 11 sixths. So that would be 11 sixths. You want to include 11 sixths, so it's a square bracket, comma, infinity. It's all the x values greater than 11 sixths. So you would have all the values towards positive infinity. And so now the number line, what would it look like? Well, again, you're only worried about 11 sixths on the number line, so place 11 sixths right in the center. 
and you want to include 11 sixths, and notice that you want to shade to the right because its x value is greater than 11 sixths. So shade the number line to the right forever towards positive infinity. So the biggest thing you need to be careful about when you solve linear inequalities is that if you do not reverse the inequality, if you forget to reverse the inequality here, you will have the wrong interval notation because you'll be shading to the left on the number line instead of shading to the right. So it's very important that you remember to reverse the inequality only when you multiply or divide by a negative number. Okay, let's try a couple more. Number three this time. The inequality is four times x plus one in parentheses plus two outside the parentheses greater than only 3x plus 6. So again, make sure that you distribute to remove any parentheses. So you have 4x plus 4 plus 2 greater than 3x plus 6. Combine any like terms on the same side of the inequality first. So you have 4x plus 6 is greater than 3x plus 6. So now subtract 6 to both sides of the inequality so that way you can combine those like terms. So 4x greater than 6 minus 6 is 0, so it just stays 3x. So now a very common mistake to do here would be divide. You're not ready to divide yet. You need to have all your like terms on the same side of the inequality first. So subtract 3x on the left side of the inequality as well. So you have x is greater than, so 4x minus 3x gives you 1x, is greater than 3x minus 3x gives you 0. So this is the solution set. It's any x value that's greater than 0 is a solution to this inequality. So the interval notation would be, well, this inequality is strictly greater than. It's not or equal to. So you do not want to include x equals 0. So to do that, you, in, you have a parenthesis instead of a bracket. So parenthesis 0 and any x, any x value greater than 0 is a solution, so positive infinity. And always use parentheses with infinity or negative infinity. And so now the number line, 0 is right in the center of the number line. And this time, again, we're going to shade to the right, but you do not want to include zero, so it's a parenthesis instead that opens to the right, and then shade to the right forever. One thing that I would suggest that you do if you're having trouble figuring out whether you shade to the left or you shade to the right on a number line is to pick a value that's greater than zero, like x equals five. If you plug in five into the original inequality and it's true, you shade the side that x equals five was on. If it's x equals negative 2, if you plug negative 2 in and it's false, you don't shade the side that x equals negative 2 is on. So that's a good way you can check your answer. So one more of these. Number 4 is solve this inequality. Negative 2, parentheses, x minus 4, then plus 6 outside the parentheses, less than negative 4, parentheses, 2x minus 1, and then plus 8 outside the parentheses. So again, this is just like a linear equation, except the equal sign has been replaced with a less than symbol. So distribute to remove any grouping symbols on both sides of the inequality this time. So negative 2x plus 8 is plus 6 less than negative 8x plus 4 and then plus 8. Combine any like terms first. So you have negative 2x plus 14 is less than negative 8x plus 12. So now move all the constant terms to the same side of the inequality. So let's subtract 14. So if you subtract 14, you'll have negative 2x is less than negative 8x. Subtract 2, because 12 subtract 14 will give you negative 2. And now add 8x to the left side of the inequality to combine the x terms. So 6x would be less than negative 2. So negative 2x plus 8x. So now divide both sides of the inequality by positive 6. So do not reverse the inequality. You only reverse the inequality when you multiply or divide by, by a negative number. So x is less than negative 2 divided by 6, which can be reduced. So x is less than negative 1 third to lowest terms. So that means the solution set is all x values that are less than negative 1 third. So what would that look like with interval notation? Well, you would have a parenthesis on negative one-third because it's not or equal to, it's just strictly less than, and x values less than negative one-third. So it would be negative infinity with the parentheses to negative one-third with another set of parentheses. And so now the number line, 
negative one-third right in the center. This represents all x values on the number line. And we want to shade to the left because it's x values less than negative one-third. And negative one-third gets a parentheses and shade to the left. So this gives you an idea of how to solve a linear inequality. It works just like solving a linear equation. You would distribute to remove any grouping symbols. You combine like terms on the same side. You move terms that are like terms to the, to the same side of the inequality to isolate the x term. And then remember, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you reverse the inequality symbol. And that's the only time you reverse the inequality symbol. All right, let's finish up this first video by talking about an example that we solved with linear equations, but we haven't talked about with linear inequalities yet. So a linear inequality that contains fractions with constants in the denominator, so in other words, you have real numbers in the denominator, no variables, you can multiply both sides of the inequality by the least common denominator to clear the fractions. So let's try example two. The inequality is negative three X divided by two plus six is less than or equal to 5x divided by negative 3. So let's find out what the least common denominator is, or LCD. So you have 2 in the denominator, you have a 1 that's underneath the 6, and then a negative 3. Well, among 2 and negative 3, the LCD is negative 6. Notice that you need a negative because it's a negative 3, and the common denominator between 2 and 3 is 6. So now multiply both sides of the inequality by the LCD. So that means multiply each of the terms in the inequality by negative 6. So you have negative 3x divided by 2 multiplied by negative 6 plus 6 times negative 6. And now remember, we're multiplying both sides of the inequality by a negative number, by negative 6. So reverse the inequality symbol. It becomes greater than or equal to 5x divided by negative 3 times negative 6. Now what we are hoping to have happen is that all the denominators will just cancel out. 2 goes into negative 6, negative 3 times. Negative 3 will go into negative 6 two times. So you have negative 3x times negative 3 plus 6 times negative 6 greater than or equal to 5x times 2. So again, remember, reverse the inequality symbol. when you multiply or divide by a negative number. And that's what we had to do when we multiplied everything by negative six. All right, so now it should work exactly like we were solving linear equations. So this becomes nine X subtract 36 is greater than or equal to 10 X. So now move all the x terms to the same side. So subtract 9x, that gives you negative 36 is greater than or equal to 10x. Subtract 9x is 1x. But now notice that the x is on the right side of the inequality. That's not typically how you write it. It's not wrong, but it's not typically how you write the, the inequality. x is typically on the left. So x is less than or equal to negative 36. So we're going to write the solution set using interval notation, just like before. So solution set in interval notation would be all the x values less than or equal to negative 36. Well, it would be negative infinity to negative 36, and it's or equal to negative 36, so square bracket. And then again, graph the solution set. So the number line would be the set of all real numbers where negative 36 is right in the middle of the number line. You want to include negative 36 and the square bracket is facing or opening to the left. So you shade the number line to the left. So you solve linear inequalities with fractions exactly like you would with solving linear equations with fractions. You find the least common denominator 
and you multiply all the terms in the inequality by the LCD. Just keep in mind, if the LCD is a negative number, you have to reverse the inequality symbol because you multiply both sides of the inequality by a negative number. So this is a good place to stop this first video in solving linear inequalities. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about solving compound inequalities.